All right, thank you for coming. My name is Justin Elbert. I'm with the Executive Director of Communications here at Klein ISD. I got Chief of Police Marlon Runnels here with us to talk about the situation we had at Klein Forest today. And Chief Runnels will take a few questions after his prepared statements. Chief Runnels. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Chief Marlon Runnels. That's M-A-R-L-O-N-R-U-N-N-E-L-S. Uh, and today I want to address the incident that just took place here at Klein Forest High School. Uh, I want to share with the community uh, that the investigation is ongoing uh, and it is one that we take very, very serious. So if we have any students out there who think that initiating this kind of uh, jokes or pranks is okay, it is not. You will be charged. Uh, you will be charged with a felony, uh, such, as, such as the case for this, the person involved in this situation. Um, I want to thank all of our law enforcement partners. Uh, we've been in communication with uh, Constable Mark Herman, uh, Chief Gonzalez and his, and his team were here to support us in these efforts and our partners at the uh, FBI office. So uh, it is a collaborative approach to this process uh, and it's one that we're very, very appreciative of. I also want to take the time to thank our staff. Uh, they responded very, very swiftly. Uh, they did a great job of ensuring that our kids felt safe throughout this entire ordeal. Uh, so I'm grateful for the, for the staff and the fact that they utilize the trainings that they've received uh, in this situation. It, it, it was indeed a, a threat that someone had a bomb. That is correct. Uh, as soon as we, we got the notice, we have multiple layers of, of safety protocols. And so as soon as we were made aware of it through our system, uh, we took swift action and initiated our response. So there's never a gunman? There was never a gunman. There was never an active, active uh, shooter event or incident on this campus. I want to be very, very clear about that. That did not happen, and anybody who's out there putting that information out there should have stopped immediately. We don't, we don't think that that stuff is, is, uh, is okay or is serious. So uh, there was no gunman on this campus. We do have someone in custody, but again, that investigation is ongoing. So again, we have multiple layers. I don't want to get too far into the weeds of the, on the investigation, but we have multiple safety layers, and, and one of those safety protocols uh, alerted us to uh, the statement that was made. Uh, I'm not going to give you an exact timeline, but I can tell you it was within minutes, within minutes uh, that the post, the, the statement went out, uh, that we, we were notified and we responded. Classes were started. Yes, ma'am. It was a generalized. It was a generalized statement. A generalized statement. Sorry, Mister. Did they write it, write it on Facebook? Or they didn't write it on Facebook. Where did all hear it? The uh, through through okay through our software system. So we have we have multiple layers of safety, and so whenever we issue our safe our devices to our students, uh, those devices are monitored, right, to make sure that incidents like this don't occur. Are you and devices, phones? not not phones, our our laptops, our tablets, our educational devices to support the learning that takes place. What do you mean? Like the student made the threat like in the form of what? In form of an electronic communication. They typed something out. Okay, but you can't tell. I don't want to get into the specifics. Yes, ma'am. Did you talk about the charges that the student is facing? The, char the student is facing a felony charge. The student is absolutely facing a felony charge, as they should. This is the third scare at a school this week. A lot of parents are anxious, you know, maybe just from a law enforcement standpoint, your message that, you know, we've seen these now at three different sets of schools. Well, I want to emphasize that we train for situations like this. We have sound processes in place for situations like this. And as you guys saw, you saw the law enforcement present. We partner with our law, with our other law enforcement agencies, not just the sheriffs and the constables, but also I've been getting calls of support from our other ISD police departments as well. Uh, so we talk and we communicate. And so we each each one of us want to make sure that situations like this, if they arise, that we have the support on the back end to work through it and work through it pretty, pretty accurately and quickly. And that's what took place today. What's the charge of the students going to face? A uh, terroristic threat. And are, did the parents know? The parent is aware. What do you say to students who make these kind of threats or people in general who make these kind of false threats? 
It's not funny. It's not a joke. You will be charged with a felony, and especially if you do it here in Klein ISD. So don't do it. We take it seriously. I can't give you the age of the individual involved. I can't do that. When you, when you look at all the resources for today. Yes, ma'am. We take these situations seriously, you know, and we work them all the way through until such a time that we believe that the threat is not legitimate. And so if something like this happens, we're going to put the resources in place to ensure that our community, our kids, our staff are safe. That's what you saw here today. I'm not I'm not familiar with whatever took place uh, outside of this situation. My focus was on making sure that this was taken care of. This was the priority. Parents complained about how chaotic it was getting information to them. Is there a way it could be smoother next time? I would I would just tell our parents to make sure that they opt into our communication notifications because we've been very consistent and putting out information throughout this entire process. And so uh, our parents have the information every step of the way, where they need to go to reunify with their kids, what the status of the investigation was. We were putting stuff out very, very frequently just so we can mitigate any concerns on the part of our parents. Can you talk about the next steps? What happens after? Got a lot of questions. The next steps, the investigation will continue and we will see this investigative process all the way through throughout the courts.